I'm going to very briefly introduce all our speakers and then I'm going to leave them to get about their business because really their content is what you want to hear. So first up will be A Quiet Revolution Transforming the NLI Printed Collections. Our speakers are Grania McLaughlin and Honora Fall, both from the National Library. Um, second then is DCU's new Request Collection, Incorporation and Collaboration with Michaela Hollywood and Mary Kiley. And then last but certainly not least, Building the Arc, UL's journey into automated storage and retrieval. And that'll be Louise O'Shea on behalf of herself and Cora. Okay, so without further ado, and with fingers crossed for no technological problems, can I invite uh, Gronio, please? Thank you. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm going to talk to you this afternoon about the quiet revolution, maybe the not so quiet revolution. I'd just like to say that Leo copied us, it wasn't the other way around. Um, I'm, we're going to talk to you about the print collections in the National Library, and I'm sure a number of you are familiar with uh, the, the book stacks and the National Library's West Wing. Uh, but just in case people aren't, um, there's a picture of there, there's a picture of it, um, uh, and it is Victorian in every sense. Um, it's a Victorian build. It has. Um, no fire suppression system, there's no environmental controls, there's no sprinkler system. It faces onto a very busy, increasingly busy uh, Kildare Street, um, and uh, the books have been there for uh, the guts of 140 years. Um, we have a total of about 400,000 uh, printed items in this area, over five floors, um, but where I'm going to focus today on the 135,000 uh, items that uh, comprise the Irish collection. Um, they're arranged by a very unique version of Dewey in that um, for, we, we used Dewey, but then we extended Dewey uh, in the areas of history, language and literature. So our um, call numbers in some cases in those areas uh, could reach uh, a mammoth 16 uh, digits long. So over the years, we've, we've really worked uh, to mitigate against the, the environment um, that we've, we, we have these materials in. Uh, we've cleaned them, we've lined shelves, uh, we've removed the special collections um, when we had the opportunity to do that. Um, but we had this fantastic opportunity uh, given to us about a year and a half ago uh, when the capital project um, uh, was announced. Um, and this is going to revolutionize the space in the, in the National Library. What we're going to do is flip uh, the uh, book stacks that have been at the front of the building uh, to the back of the building and uh, the front of the building will then be uh, used for as a public public spaces and, and exhibitions. Um, we have a provision for a new on-site uh, bookstore with high-density, multi-level static shelving solution, um, uh, and that will be ready within a couple of years. Uh, the, the slight problem is that we don't have room for everything that's in the West Wing uh, currently. Um, so we did need, we knew that we were going to have to do some kind of a stock check on what we called the Irish Collection. Um, and the Irish Collection, because uh, I, I assume that everybody knows what it is, but it is pretty much the bedrock um, of all of our print collections. Um, it is the, it's the go-to for, for researchers. Um, the, the, it has been used over the years um, by um, all of the researchers in, in the library. Um, and it is, as I say, it, it does focus on the Irish language, literature, and history. Um, but the, um, what we need to do, obviously, was change from the Dewey system uh, to a, a system more, more, more appropriate for the 21st century. But we also needed to resize, re number, reorder and review the Irish collection because they were all um, organised in, in very different ways. Uh, we also had to ensure that the, our reading room service uh, continued throughout this, this period. Um, so what we did this time last year, June 2017, for six months, we um, decided that all the uh, published collection staff uh, would be involved in the work. Um, that's uh, 23 of us uh, working on this, along with our, our other work. Um, we decided uh, at the outset that we would use the knowledge and expertise of our own staff rather than outsourcing any of the project. Um, and it, it, was, it was a big ask, but we, we, we got through it. Um, the stock check um, involved... Uh, Using um, uh, the, the, using the shelf the shelf list that we had, um, and there were 110,000 records that we needed to go through, and we resized and renumbered um, the book material into seven different sizes, um, so that you can see that there um, the Road to Bright City is no longer a 16-digit call number; it is a much more manageable um, five-number sequence uh, with the AA, which indicates the size its size. So we did a, a lot of work. Um, on that, um, but I just wanted to explain a little bit of the complexities of the, ca of the, the and the issues and the challenges that we faced. Um, 
the the records I, I was listening to Monica and I was slightly jealous um, uh, this morning when she said that she had 17 years of errors in catalogue records to, um, to to fix um, unfortunately we had 140 years sometimes 100 years of uh, rec of catalogue records that we had to um, amend and and fix um, these are records that were first of all in the guard book and then in the card catalogues and eventually they've um, moved on to the online catalogues but not without little amendments amendments and changes along the way. Um, for instance, uh, up until about 1980, when we had a title of a book and there were new additions to that title, we just put all the additions at the one call number, just to confuse, really. Uh, so we could never really work out how many copies of, of an item we, we necessarily had. Um, we also had a huge number of duplicates uh, in the collection, um, but we again weren't sure of how many we had. Um, and uh, we knew that we only wanted to keep one item on site. Uh, there was obviously also different categories of material within, embedded in the, in the collection. Pamphlets, multi-volume sets and serials were all in this Irish collection without distinction. And uh, we also uh, needed to remove the early collections, which we would classify as anything pre-1801. Um, so 110,000 records were checked uh, and reviewed. Um, we oh, we um, managed to um, reassign over 60,000 items, 60,000 uh, monographs in the in the, those six months, and we also made substantial savings in in storage space. Um, as you're probably all aware, the the smaller books are the most um, uh, common. So 84% of the total were actually AA or A size books, um, and then we found that we had over 12,500 duplicates. Um, of the of the within the monographs, that was 17% of the total monographs that we we um, held, and we had to either amend or newly create or correct uh, 10,000 catalogue records um, in addition to the uh, to, to the work that we just did in simply transferring material over. Um, I'm going to pass you on very quickly now to Hanora because we're under time pressure. Uh, thank you very much, Gronia. Oh, sorry, the back one. Okay, thank you, Gronia. So, um, work on phase two uh, commenced in January of this year, and that involves follow on work on certain categories of material set aside from phase one of the stock check uh, that Gronia talked about. So, this involves checking 35,000 volumes of serials, that's about 7,000 serial titles, about 2,000 what we call Irish large books. So you might be familiar with the ILB call numbers in our catalogue. Um, also, we had 8,000 multi-volume sets that had to be uh, processed and 40,000 items in the, uh, in the general collections. So that involved shelf checking and barcoding um, those items. So the general collections, we call, we, they're basically the non-Irish collections. Um, the major focus, obviously, is our serials collection. And um, up to now, serials and books had been interfiled in the Irish collection. And as a result of the stock check, we were able to extract the serials from the book collection. And this is the very first time that we've been able to assess them as a discrete collection. And this is a very substantial collection. It currently occupies over 1,000 uh, linear meters of shelving in the stacks. That's over one kilometer of shelving. So the aim of the, the serials um, project is to check the holdings for each serial title and to ensure that they are reflected accurately and correctly in the catalog records. Um, and this is the first time that we've had accurate um, holdings information included into the serial catalogue records. So this will obviously improve access for both staff and readers. And um, in addition to the, as well as uh, the check of the books, we are finding serials that were not on the catalogue. So we're in including new catalogue records. Uh, and these are being created for the serial titles that were basically um, uh, we're revealing new material to readers. 
Uh, for practical reasoning, the uh, shelf checking is being done, uh, the serials checking is being done at the shelves, and a serials work form, um, an A4 sheet, is completed at the shelves, which notes details of any holdings, any gaps, any title changes. And then the catalogers take that, use the information on that A4 work form, then to make um, the various, the relevant um, catalogue amendments to the records. Uh, we know that a sizable number of the serials um, are rarely requested and digital surrogates are also available for some of the titles. So therefore we plan to send the majority of the serials to off-site storage um, in the future when the project is finished. So the serials project also involves determining which serials will remain on and on-site and which will be sent off-site. Uh, the serials that uh, will be remaining on site will be resized, renumbered and relabeled into four sizes and this will result in a substantial um, saving in storage space. So to date we have a completed work on over 3,700 serial titles. So we're more than halfway there. So other projects in, um, in phase two are uh, the work on our Irish large uh, books, the ILB call number material, that's about 2,000 items. And in fact, we've discovered they're not all books. Some of there were some serials also included in, in, in that, um, at those call numbers. And uh, we have uh, done, we've completed work, or our catalogers have, on our 8,000 multi-volume set material. And in this project, the catalogue records were checked and additional information about the various volumes in the set were included in the catalogue records. So some of the, the multi-volume sets are very extensive. For example, the, the collected works of, of George Moore, 21 volumes in, in that particular set. So the additional information will help people to identify the relevant volumes they may be interested in. Um, Phase two also involves preparing for a move of all the published collections out of the West Wing, um, either for storage on-site in our new bookstore or for storage off-site. So as part of that, we are checking and barcoding the 40,000 general or the non-Irish uh, book items in advance of uh, a move to off-site storage. So the project outcomes uh, so far, um, all of this work uh, we found is is improving access for staff and readers, and already we are getting very uh, positive feedback uh, from our readers, and they're very pleased to see the additional information in the catalogue records. For example, as Gronya mentioned about the, the additions held, they now can be confident when they put in a request that they can specify a particular edition. It's also useful for our staff to know what editions we have and where we might have gaps. It helps our, our acquisitions uh, staff um, who are trying to fill gaps. Um, and also, what's invaluable are the detailed holdings information about our serials records. So this is a, it's a, new, a new thing for us. Um, everyone in the published collections team has been involved in the stock check work from doing the shelf checking to processing, barcoding, labelling, signage, reshelving and doing all the cataloguing work. And much credit is due to our staff for their continuing their input, their enthusiasm, and their hard work. Um, there is, we've noticed there's been a very positive impact on team morale, and it's obvious as well that staff care deeply about the, the collections, and they're very excited at the opportunity to be involved with the stock check. Um, they see the benefits of having more detailed information about our holdings, and they are very happy that the inaccuracies in our catalogue are being addressed. Staff, in credit, all credit to the staff also, because they've managed to keep up with their section work. Staff have other duties apart from working on the stock check. They also have counter duty and they work in various capacities in the published collections department. Um, so apart, we've kept all our reading room services going apart from one closed day. Um, the reading rooms are currently closed on Mondays uh, since August of last year, and this has proved to be a key factor in freeing up staff time to work on the stock check projects. Um, further um, follow-on projects involve our um, pamphlets, further detailed work on the pamphlet volumes, and we expect that we may find, um, when we do that, when we um, investigate those, there may be small ephemeral items there that may not have been catalogued and may be unique to the uh, library. The pre-1801 monographs, which will be um, 
will be investigated and conserved and also transferred to our rare book collections. Um, the CBF for missing items and the records with uncertain holdings will be, have been marked for further investigation. Um, so invariably over the years items will go missing and while we report, we can report that a number of um, previously missing items were found during the stock check work, um, we found that less than 1% of our total collection um, is missing. And, but these items will be followed up again, checked again and decisions made about um, ordering replacement copies. Um, another follow on, a project involves stock checking. Uh, more than 350,000 books in our off-site uh, storage. So our, per our current priority at the moment is planning the physical moves of the collections and we, are, we, we, we will be doing all of that by the end of 2019. So to sum up, as a result of our stock check, we have more detailed and accurate information about our collections and holdings. And with this knowledge, we can plan with confidence for the future storage and management of the national collections. And this is what we're calling our quiet revolution. So thank you very much.